Okay, you might not even know what this thing even is, but in this video, we're gonna explain everything about the Toyota Crown. We're gonna show you what goes wrong with them, what they're like to live with. Most importantly, but we're gonna tell you if you should buy one or not. How about we do this? Let's go. Okay, now the Crown has been available primarily in Japan since 1955 across 16 different generations. And it's pretty much the brand's like mid-sized to large-ish luxury family car, rear-wheel drive kind of thing. In this video, but we're gonna be focusing on the 13th generation. They ran from 2008 to 2012. Now, if you're looking at one of these in Japan, like any good JDM car, these have been available in a bewildering array of different variants and versions and examples. But as far as what you'll find most commonly on the used market here, here in Australia, they're gonna be ranging from pretty much the base model, which is the V6 Athlete, up to the V6 Hybrid, and then topping out with the V8 powered Majesta. Now, as far as transmissions go, you're gonna be choosing between, depending on the model, obviously, between a six or eight speed automatic, or a CVT. But don't fret, that CVT, it's not as bad as you might think. We'll, we'll explain in a second. Now, as far as the range and the trim specs go, it isn't as simple as that. See, the Athlete and the Hybrid, they are quite similar in a lot of the specifications, but because Japan, they can vary a little bit depending on what options have been fitted. Plus, these are huge in the aftermarket scene. So the examples landing here in Australia, they can vary, even though they technically don't, but they can, if you know what I mean. Plus, even when it comes to the Majesta, well, they can vary depending on which of the three or technically four different like sub trim specs. Even engine wise, some rear ones can have a V6 and some can have like, I think it's a 4.3 litre V8 with all wheel drive. Look, overall, it's pretty much safe to say that each example landing here in Australia are gonna vary from car to car. Now, pricing wise here in Australia, the really cheap ones kick off from around about 15,000 bucks. That's gonna be like a, like a taxi spec crown. At the other end of the spectrum, you're gonna be looking at 30, maybe even $35,000 for the really special Majestas. Although, being an import, it can be a challenge to get finance on these things. Luckily, Driver has you covered. See, no matter what car you're looking at, including imports, hit the link down there and Driver will get you the very best finance package from dozens of different lenders. There are no hidden fees and you can get pre-approval in just minutes. Plus, do all that via the link down there and you're gonna get a free $150 fuel voucher. How awesome is that? Now, there's a chance that you may not have ever seen one of these in the metal, but to give you an idea of size, it's pretty much the same size as the current Toyota Camry, only just like slightly narrower and slightly taller. But also like the Camry, I think it's, I think it's an understated thing. In fact, and look, I don't know if the camera, I suppose, translates this well enough, but it is a really classy looking vehicle. And I love the fact that it's just, it's different to the usual suspects like a five series BMW or an E-Class Mercedes. Also, with the right mods, like a subtle drop in ride height and fitting some very classy aftermarket wheels, it can look the business. However, as it does feature a similar driveline, front engine rear wheel drive as a Ford Falcon or a Holden Commodore, and many of those have been destroyed because of idiots, plenty of these coming to Australia can suffer the same problems. Just look for dodgy modifications, bad taste, and just abuse. Now the subtle but classy vibe continues inside, but it is important to know that the materials used are gonna vary depending on the year and the trim spec. For example, some might feel like a kind of classy hire car, but then at the other end of the spectrum, like a top spec Majesta with all the fruit, it feels genuinely luxury. This is a hybrid, but it's been really well optioned. So inside, no scratchy plastics, everything is soft touch. The, the feeling of quality and the fit and finish is absolutely top notch. And even design wise, it's just nice. It, it somehow, it hasn't aged. It doesn't feel modern, but it doesn't feel old or retro. It's just, it's just right. Now comfort wise, firstly, when you start the car, you move it into position and comfort wise is fantastic. These seats, super, super comfortable. Great on a long trip. Ergonomics, fantastic. It's just a beautiful place to be. In fact, with the design and ergonomics, it easily matches anything from Europe. Now, as far as wear and tear in this particular model goes, this is from 2008. It has about 83, 84,000 Ks on it. Incredible. Like the leather is still super supple. Door cards are in fantastic condition. Steering wheel still has texture on it. So does the gear selector. The armrest, no kind of weird gathering of leather there. Seats, fantastic. Like wear and tear, it's from 2008. How is it this good? Now, in practicality up front, you've got expandable door pockets. You've got a little spot here to put like any old checkbook stubs here. You've got a spot for coins, a little storage bit there. You've got a spot for your sunglasses here. What does the owner have? He has hawkers. Cool. Um, you've got 
two cup bottles here with a removable divider. Look, it does have a cigarette lighter and ashtray, which is like that's disgusting, but it is a Japanese car from the naughty, so we're gonna we're gonna let that slide. You've got a pretty oh, pretty decent sized glove box there, and you've got a bisexual center console because it opens both ways. Okay, now in the back seat, I'm exactly 25 centimeters taller than the Queen. Get it? Toyota Crown, like the Netflix show Queen. Yeah. Anyway, this is in my driving position. My God, this is so comfortable. Like heaps of knee room. The seats themselves, so so comfy. Good glass house. Everything's kind of light and airy. It's just a fabulous place to be. However, I wouldn't want to be sitting in the middle because the transmission tunnel is huge, so no F for your legs. Then as far as wear and tear in this particular example goes, look, obviously every crown's going to be different, but this particular one, it does get used all the time. The leather is super supple, door card's fantastic, even the carpet feels great. It's in great condition. Then practicality in the back seat, you've got your own air vents there, you've got some excellent size map pockets, you've got a little spot for, I suppose, life's filth and spare change to throw it poorer people outside. You've got ashtrays here, gross, but that's okay. Also, there is a pull-down armrest, but that's a secret. We've got to, we'll go through that in a second. Now, in the boot of this one, it's okay. It's a decent amount of size for a sedan, but being a hybrid, you've got the battery pack hiding in there. In the naturally aspirated V8 and V6, way more boot space, but like it's, it's, it's a good amount of space. So look, as we alluded to before, what stuff you get is going to vary depending on the year and the trim spec, but these were designed to go head-to-head -head against some of the best European luxury cars. So you're going to get all the stuff you'd expect, like multi-zone air conditioning, a premium sound system, powered everything, and all of this and more. But climb up like the Toyota Crown ladder just a little bit and find a really well-optioned one, and the features are so impressive. For example, this particular car, you've got like powered sunshades, a digital instrument cluster. This is 2008 and it has this. You've got heated and cooled seats, parking sensors everywhere. Plus in the back of this particular car, you've got speakers on the shoulder sections of the front seats. You've got speakers in the roof. Then the armrest, which has its own kind of storage here. The rear seats are heated, plus you can actually adjust the reclining of them via power. You can also adjust the position of the passenger seat from these buttons here, and then outside, soft closing doors, and even check this out, hold the unlock button down. Amazing! But then find like one of the ultra rare Majesta F packages and that replaces the center seat with like an entire console and it turns the passenger seat into like an Ottoman style setup for ultimate comfort in the back. It's wild. Now one of the big concerns with buying an import is the fact that a lot of the functionality is in Japanese and in this car it is. And also with the age of this car, you can forget about having Apple CarPlay or Android Auto fitted as standard. But the good news is you can fit CarPlay and Android Auto with aftermarket equipment like a software update. In fact, a lot of the people in the owners groups highly recommend the Crown Focus kit and mentioned that Frank from Crown Focus is awesome to deal with. Guys, all the details are down there. Also, just on the features and tech, these things were one of the first cars in the world to feature a whole bunch of innovative technology. We're talking like navigation-based adaptive suspension, active noise cancelling, night vision tech, and also the world's first center airbag. Actually, just on the safety tech, we should really take you through what safety equipment you can expect, but to do that, we're gonna to cut to another voiceover, but this time it's someone else in the Crown community. It's the king. You can expect multiple airbags, anti-lock brakes, traction and stability control, pre-crash and avoidance safety systems, GPS-linked braking assist, blind spot warnings, and driver fatigue monitoring. Okay, so it's a hybrid Toyota that's pretty much the same size as a Camry. Does it feel anything like a Camry to drive? Well, yes and no. So first up, just pottering around town, yeah, it's as easy to live with as a Camry. Your grandparents would love this. It's super quiet inside. Even on the worst roads, it's smooth and comfortable. The parameters and dimensions of the car are really easy to judge. No huge blind spots. That bit's like a Camry. Like, okay, these roads here aren't exactly shit, but just listen. Like, I could, I could whisper to you, and you can still hear what I'm saying, because it's that quiet in here. It's amazing. But then when it comes to, like, steering and handling and all that sort of stuff, it feels way more like a Lexus than it does just a Toyota. And that means that this will easily match any of the Euro competition, like a BMW 5 Series or an E-Class Mercedes. Only that this probably won't break down and then cost you an arm and a leg to fix. Although we will take you through what goes wrong with these in a second. 
But then there's the times that it doesn't feel like a Camry at all, like when you put your foot down, especially from a standstill, especially if you're in sport mode, this thing hauls. Like, it's not supposed to be a performance car, but like, yeah. Because of the EV assistance in the CVT, it accelerates like an EV. Actually, also like an EV, if you need to overtake or like pull into a, a gap in traffic, the power is just there, like oh, instantly. Actually, just on the CVT, I, I normally can't stand CVTs, but in this, it does kind of suit the car, like it kind of wafts along. You don't want to feel gear changes. It suits it perfectly. Also, because it's a hybrid with a CVT, it's really good for fuel consumption. These things are claimed to return a bit under eight liters per 100 Ks. Even this one is seeing a bit over nine. Guys, this is a seriously impressive car to drive, but I've got a question for you, or some of you. For the Euro car fans out there that would walk past this purely because of the badge, what do the Euros offer that this doesn't, besides the bullshit brand name stuff? Okay, so so far in the video, we're all falling in love with the Crown, aren't we? That might change now because we're going to take you through what goes wrong with them. Let's start with the exterior. Okay, first up, crowns are fitted with air suspension, like a lot of cars that have air suspension at this age can have some issues. Sometimes it can be a really simple and cheap fix, other times not. Now, some people in the owners groups just recommend ditching the air suspension completely and fitting a set of quality aftermarket coilovers. Others in the owners groups think doing that is just complete sacrilege. If something goes wrong with your air suspension, it's up to you what you do. Okay, now this next one, it's not exactly the car's fault, but let's say some idiot runs into you and you require replacement body panels or headlights or anything. You can't just get them locally from Toyota. You're gonna to have to import them and that can take time and cost money. It's just one of those things you have to be aware of when buying import, could be a pain in the neck. Actually, just on the whole importing cars thing, Guys, be really, really careful. We know of some dodgy operators that will falsify documents, pull out gauge clusters to show lower kilometers. There are some sketchy people out there. If you are gonna buy one of these or any import, go to a professional like the guys from Go Garage that imported this and supplied it to us. Those guys are legends, links are down below. Okay, now problems inside. Yeah, nothing. Honestly, through the research we did, very few things go wrong in here. There are the occasional sporadic reports of like a door lock actuator here and there. In this car and a couple of them, the rear blind can sort of play up, the powered blind can play up. But the good news is because it shares so many components with just standard Toyota and Lexus models, getting spare parts generally is easy and cheap. Now, before we get into mechanically what can go wrong with these things, firstly, a massive thank you to everyone in the Crown community for helping us research this video, especially Brenton Wild. Mate, you're like a walking crown wikipedia amazing information you guys are legends thanks so much also thank you guys for helping to make redriven one of the fastest growing automotive youtube channels in australia simply by hitting that subscribe button you're allowing us to make bigger and better videos all the time you are a legend okay now the big question mechanically what goes wrong with the crown i can't tell you because i'm not a qualified mechanic but Jim is. Look, both of the V6 options in these things are incredibly reliable. Um, and some say they are amongst, if not the most reliable petrol engines ever. Yep, occasionally you might see a leaking water pump or a failed coil pack or even a minor oil leak, but they are way better than just about, no, they are way better than everything in their class. And the same can be said for the one you are V8, incredibly reliable, top of its game. Look, if they've had a sketchy service history, both the V6 and V8 can use a bit of oil, but their tolerance for neglect is way better than all their competitors. Look, don't get me wrong, some of their competitors, and I'm looking at you, BMW, Merck and Audi, they all make great engines, but they're precious little butterflies and they do not like to be neglected. The hybrid systems and the transmissions in these, again, very reliable with very few reported issues. The S200 is now at the age where the hybrid battery is past its prime, but they share the same architecture with all the other Toyota batteries and all the parts are pretty much interchangeable. And now there are plenty of people who offer exchange or repair batteries. They're pretty inexpensive too. And needless to say, look, you can save a lot of money by not going through Toyota for those. There's plenty of people out there that can help. The rest of the driveline, look, very few reported cases of any issues there at all. Yeah, look, overall, if these things have had a good service history, they are incredibly reliable. But one thing to be mindful of, look, a lot of these now are getting touched by drifty boys and girls, and they are doing some questionable mods. So just have a good look at it and make sure that the mods are done right. Not too much negative camber. It looks, it's not a good look. Okay, so should you buy one? 
I think we all know the answer to that. Yeah, of course you should. In fact, if you're looking at kind of a car like this, why would you buy anything else? It easily matches, if not surpasses, the Euro competition for all of the subjective luxury feels and vibe, yet is massively more exclusive and easily more reliable with lower maintenance and repair costs. Here in Australia, great condition crowns, even taking into account the battery replacement cost for the hybrid, can often ask thousands of dollars less than a similar kilometre and condition Commodore or Falcon. And sorry Aussie car fans, but the build quality of this just leaves the Aussies for dead. And with so many different spec examples landing on our shores, there's probably going to be a, a crown for every taste and budget. Guys, I've got to say, like in this job, I, I get to you know try a whole bunch of different cars, and this thing is easily one of the most impressive vehicles I've ever experienced. Yes, yes, you should buy one, but only from the right people. Which then begs the question, do you buy one or do you stick with one of the Euro competitors or maybe something Australian, maybe even something American, or do you buy a Crown or a Lexus? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. Now the crown has been a look overall. Overall, see, no matter what car you're after, including an import driver, will get you the very best possible. Google Crown Focus down in the description. What? What? What am I doing? Look, one thing to be mindful of if you're looking at these, a lot of them have gotten. <laughs> Yeah, we can't, I can't speak now. One thing you need to be mindful of is a lot of these now are getting touched by drifty boys or girls. <laughs> touched by drifty boys. Okay. I might not, I might who not do be. questionable mods. I might have to go over there. <laughs> oh God, wait, my glasses are fogging up. Sorry, Cal. Regular programming will resume in a minute.